am a simple science-loving girl. When I see the name Smithsonian, I say, take my money. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to give some money to the Smithsonian uh, and go take a tour of, look, here I am with my names, Punta Culebra. Punta Culebra. Okay, so we are um, on the famous Amador Causeway uh, in Panama City, and the Smithsonian has a nature center here. And I am super excited to take a tour of it. And of course, I want to bring you guys along. So let's go in and see what the Smithsonian has to offer. All right, so you come in the gate, and this is a little ticket booth. So you can see here that residents are $5, so we only had to pay 5 And visitors are 8 uh, Jubileado is $2.50, and children are 2 All right, so um, as you can see, that's pretty good prices to get in. All right. Now that we've paid, let's go figure out what there is to see. All right, from the little ticket booth, you um, jump in your vehicle, you drive a little bit further down to the actual parking place. Look, guys, I have no idea what to expect here. All I know is I see Smithsonian, I see Nature Center, and I am there. Because if you know anything about me, you know I have a degree in marine biology, I am an educator, I teach science to kids all over the world, and biodiversity is my jam. All right, so... Welcome to Punta Culebra. It's a part of a small archipelago um, on the Amador Causeway. Um, and yeah, that's basically what it's saying. Okay. Oh, we're right there at the uh, entrance to the Panama Canal too. Oh, yes. So this, this is the Pacific side entrance or exit to the Panama Canal. And look at that awesome beach down there. All right, in we go. Okay, so we've come across some signs, but then the first room that we're coming into is a room that captures my heart. The fabulous frogs of Panama. Yes. All right, oh my God, look at these exhibits. This is amazing. Okay, we'll go through and take a look at all of this and I'll show you the highlights. So this is just an absolutely fabulous exhibit and I don't get blown away by scientific stuff very often because it tends to be very simple and and not well done this is extremely well done I'm very pleased with it so they have like information around that you can read and then they have the display counters as well are the little display terrariums with frogs in them as well so a little poison dart there. It's the kind we see in Bojas. Check that guy out. I hope you can see him. He is black and blue. He's beautiful. And the guy was saying that the black and blue ones tend to be on the Pacific side, and the black and green ones, like we get at our house in Bojas, um, they don't really have one exactly like our kind in here, but those tend to be in the Caribbean. What'd you find there? Oh, I'm so cute. Look at him. Oh. Okay. All right, I'm not gonna show you this whole thing because you're gonna come pay your money here and view this because it's really awesome. I'm gonna spend some time reading all of these signs and I'll be back with whatever's next. This is Panama's famous golden frog, the one that is basically extinct. Uh, we visited the Golden Frog Conservation Center in El Valle, and they were telling us they haven't seen one in the wild since 2009. And here's another one that is not extinct. This guy is of least concern, so that's good, but look how cute he is. Alright, so the next building that we've gone into is like a, kind of a hands-on lab area, which the scientist in me is losing her mind. Hello. Wow. This is so cool. Games for kids. Oh. This is like what we want to do in Bocas, guys. The same kind of thing. Education about biodiversity. So this is talking about like the different tracks and the different scat that you might find. Here's tracks and a skull. They have microscopes. 
where you can look at uh, like broken up shells from the beach and blow it up onto this computer screen. Oh, these are so cool. Oh! Okay, if you are in Panama and you don't come here, especially if you have kids, like even if you don't, then you're not real smart. Okay, I'm going to go through all these exhibits because I'm literally, if you can hear it in my voice, just in awe right now of what they're doing here. Okay, guys, so this is one vertebrae, one, like, you know, piece of your backbone of a whale. Look at that. That's amazing, isn't it? It doesn't say what kind it is, though. Oh, no, it does. Um, macrocephalus. Well, macrocephalus means big head. I don't know. I'm not a marine mammal person all that much. More of a fish and coral person, so I don't know my genuses. Let me see if I can find it on here. Macrocephalus. That's what I was going to say is a sperm whale because big head, macrocephalus would be big head. So this is of a sperm whale. I should have just guessed it on camera so you could be super impressed. Okay, speaking of super impressed, let's go find some other things. Check out that mural. It's like, uh, you know, there's like, um, what do you call that back there? Like tools and things that they need back there. But wow, what a great way to hide them. What is this, Brian? Fish. Coastal fish of Panama. Okay, I read that in Spanish. Okay. Uh. Me gusta peces. Okay, why don't I have this on my property? Well, I kind of do, I guess, right, home? Yeah, you've got like a really big one. On <laughs> like the entire ocean. Okay, so we can go down here and it looks like then it's like a guys this place is so cool it's like a little aquarium look super fun super cute one of my favorite fish one of the fish that really really got my kind of life going there's a whole story about puffer fish in my life Come visit me someday. Ask, I'll tell you. All right, now time for some turtle education. So um, I've taken groups of students and, to uh, this area off of Changinola in Boca. It's called San San Ponsac. And we got to see some of the baby turtles. And these are the exact same species that nest there. So these are the leatherbacks. This is the largest one. Brian, can you go stand next to that so people can see? Leatherbacks are the largest of all the sea turtles. See that? They're like, get like six feet. They're taller than Brian. All right, then there's the greens, a little smaller, and then the olives. Uh, so let's see. So this is telling you like all of the, there's seven species of turtle total in the world. They're all endangered. And Panama has five of the seven species, which is quite interesting. Okay, let's see if, I don't know if they have babies in here or what. I never know what I'm doing. Oh, they got a ray. Okay, so they have a stingray. And that's it. And that's it, and that, that's good. They don't, they shouldn't overcrowd these things. Okay, let's see what's in this one. Look, people, do not touch. It means keep your nasty fingers out of things. Little fishes. This is so cute. A uh, sea cucumber. All right. Oh, aquariums are back here. Cha ching! That's my life. For those of you who don't know it, I have a degree in marine biology, but I spent 25 years of my life in the aquarium trade, importing and um, wholesaling fish and coral to pet stores all across the United States. So aquariums have been a huge, huge part of my life. So I'm always excited to see someone's take 
on aquariums. I'm not a huge fan of personal aquariums anymore. I'm more of a fan of educational ones. Kind of changed my stance quite a bit. But let's go see what's in here. Loving it. Ah, beautiful. Not all of these are Panamanian species I see immediately. All right, so they have, so these are more Indo-Pacific. So these are the types of corals and fish that I dealt with in the aquarium trade, importing from uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Australia, Solomon Islands, Fiji, all of that, and actually doing a lot of coral aquaculture as well. So I have a love affair of these. You may recognize that fish. And you might say, oh, that's Dory. Don't you ever call it Dory around me. That's Paracanthus hepatis. Okay, <laughs> so um, these are the infamous lionfish that should not be in Panama, but they are. Um, these are Indo-Pacific fish, and they do not have any predators here in the Caribbean. They were most likely released by the pet trade in Florida and have made their way down, and they are a huge problem, massive invasive species. These spines up along the top, um, they are uh, venomous spines, and so when they jab into you, they, they're toxic, so things don't eat them. Um, and this mouth here can open up and swallow something easily at least half the size of this fish. So they can decimate a Caribbean coral reef really quickly, taking out the uh, endemic species. So here, this looks more Caribbean-ish. These look like condylactic anemones here. Feather dusters, little fish. Some beautiful orange recordia mushroom. Nice. Moray eel. Not a snake, people, it's a fish. I could give tours in this place all day long, all day long, all day long. All right, so over here uh, we have some Caribbean. So uh, some different, like a little wrasse, some of the different corals that we have here. Some of these I recognize from my own reef at my house in Bocas. And over here, oh, this is a Gulf of Cherokee. So this has to be Pacific. This is beautiful. Who knew all this was in the Cherokee? Interesting. I'm going to have to get to the Pacific side and do some snorkeling. Beautiful. Now, obviously, guys, they have a special lighting on here that the corals need, but it enhances the color as well. Which is the little crab? Yes. All right. So we got a, a, a little arrow crab down here. I have those on my reef in Bocas. And some beautiful corals. Okay. I'm going to tell you, because I've been in the aquarium trade for so long, I am super ridiculously picky, especially about cleanliness and health of fish. This aquarium is very, very clean, and everything looks extremely healthy. Thumbs up, Smithsonian. So after I turn the camera off, like each of these buildings has people in them to explain to you what's going on. Um, and they speak English, no problem. Uh, and so after I turn the camera off, he was explaining to me um, like some of the scientific research that they're doing with temperature and coral reefs and uh, like what the Smithsonian is working on right now. So you really can get a good education if you come here and you listen and you ask questions, okay? Just like being in a classroom, it doesn't matter if you're 5, 50, or 500. Listen, ask questions, and learn. All right, so now we're into the next part. Let's see what they have here. So, oh, this is just like saying that Banco General is kind of sponsoring this. So here you will find the Pacific species. And the next time you will find the Caribbean. So here you have the opportunity to compare in a visual and then touching. We ask to the people just to tell us two or one different that you feel 
when you touch the species from the Caribbean and the Pacific. So sometimes the kiss is too hard because it's a sense that it's very hard to explain how how, how it feels the, different, the, right? So it's good and, and to see that people thinking that war or the term to use that how they feel the sea cucumber, how they feel the sea star. Exactly. Because if you tell them, tell me that you are looking is more easy because you look. This is one of the same that we use more than 95%. Right. And you could say, ah, this color, you could see this and that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you touch. Touch it? It's different. It's different. It's different. Look in the trees. Stop it if you need to, so you can look. See if you see anything interesting. Right there is a two-toed. I'm zoomed in and I don't know, this camera doesn't do zoom very well, but uh, the scientist was telling me that two-toed sloths are more prevalent here on the Pacific uh, and because I told him, you know, in Bocas we have more threes than twos. And he said that's because over here on the Pacific we have the dry forest uh, and the twos prefer the dry forest, whereas the threes prefer the wet. All right, so we did all of the exhibit stuff, which is all back here and now there is a lovely nature trail, so we're going to head down it and see what kind of nature... Oh, there's another sloth! Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's hard to see in this. It's that. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Alright, we found one thing on the nature hike so far. All right, and that concludes our tour of the Smithsonian here at Punta Culubra. And all right, I have to give it thumbs up. Okay, oh, raccoon. <laughs> so, all right, so I have to give it thumbs up for sure. They have some great exhibits here. They're very well done. They're very educational. Some of them are hands-on. Um, you're gonna see a lot of really cool animals. And the best part is that the, uh, the staff here are scientists that are dedicated to this program and they are going to give you a great education about what the Smithsonian is doing here in Panama. So highly recommend it. That's it for today's adventure. Who knows where we'll end up next. So you need to make sure you subscribe. You need to make sure you click notify and you need to make sure that you join the IGO Panama Facebook group thousands of people talking about everything Panama, whether you want to move here, if you're already living here, or if you just want to come to Panama and visit. Like, it doesn't matter if you want to live here or visit, the Smithsonian is a great place to come to, right? So join us for all of our content. Until then, see you next week.